Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I am going to test out new wings for Lex. Previously when we launched it uh, we did not have a aerodynamic configuration for it and now I've put procedural wings in an effort to bring it through re-entry and maybe touch down on its tail. This will be the first test so things could go wrong. Things could go right as well. Uh, not everybody is enthusiastic about my way of actually showing failures, I've noticed. Um, it's worth pointing out that it's not just that I present all my playtime and just dump everything uh, that I do onto YouTube. Uh, let's be clear uh, that I had to model this first, but also in preparation for this launch, I've taken a look at FAR, tried to shape the aerodynamic surfaces so that FAR is reasonably okay with it. I've had to adjust the COM of the tank here and of the pod uh, to make sure that they are in better locations uh, in relation to the center of lift and also add the descent mode which we will use to simulate the fact that uh, fuel is shifting into the header tanks or from the header tanks into the rest uh, the regular tanks uh, which is how SpaceX uh, lands the craft on its tail. Uh, so we're, that'll shift the COM uh, behind the COL, if you want to put it that way. Uh, so I had to figure out the numbers for the descent mode. And yeah, so there's, there's a few things I had to do, okay? Uh, so now we are ready to test and there's a chance that it could work and there's a chance that it might not and I believe in suspense. So I don't know, you don't know, and we're going to find out. Um, things I have not done that I need to do, uh, I have not made the landing legs. It'll need a particular landing leg configuration. We're going to have the landing legs inside the body of Lex, obviously, and they'll extend outward in a particular way that I have imagined, but I'll have to model in Blender and will be usable for Starship as well. Uh, again, for those who didn't see the original video on Lex, this is a, is a Starship for a Raptor 9 rocket. So the rocket that we have down below here, the Unix rocket, is a rocket with nine Raptor engines at the bottom. So basically, the Raptor equivalent of a Falcon 9. And we are making a Lex, uh, Lex as a, space, a Starship for that. Now, the control surfaces do not work the way they do in the Starship because I don't particularly like that. Um, I think the reason why they have the fold up and down fins, if you will, is because they originally wanted to fold them up during launch so that they didn't produce aerodynamic instability during launch, especially with high level winds and all that business. Uh, so it's easier to launch in different weather conditions, so you can just fold up those and then uh, fold them down when necessary. The reason why Starship needs really big rear control surfaces or wings is mostly just for drag. It's not that it needs them that big in order to uh, control yaw or roll. Uh, they're overkill for that purpose, even with the interesting way that they are controlling uh, those axes. They are mainly there because they need the drag and the extra surface area to uh, slow down. Uh, so we are going to need to see whether we have enough surface area here to slow down or not. These are obviously smaller, but I want a minimal amount, I don't want to overdo it. So we'll go with a low ball figure and work from there. Uh, we are carrying some cargo. It's the crude configuration for Lex, but we are carrying uh, two 10 ton tanks as extra cargo, so 20 tons extra cargo. Basically what you would expect from a space shuttle kind of thing. So we're carrying that as well and we'll eject that out before coming back down. I don't anticipate a whole lot of down mass to Earth for this. Obviously, landing on Mars is a totally different thing. There we'll expect some down mass, but there we'll also, we'll also not face the same aerodynamic situation. So, uh, yeah, I, as far as landing on Earth goes, we don't want that much down mass. Another thing I had to do to prep for this was see how much fuel we would have in the forward section compared to the rear section, and, you know, whether it's good to drain all of this fuel or not. And that does depend on how much fuel we have left back here. And that's, again, to maintain the center of mass in the right place. So I've taken a look at that and what kind of 
payload we could theoretically bring down, but I don't like the idea of bringing down much payload. It brings the center mass too far forward. So, yep, that's the idea. I am going to launch this uncrewed, I think. Uh, we'll just go with that, just in case. Okay, so, no trauma. <laughs> okay, and... Well, I'll sort this out when we get outside. Alright, let's see how it works. Okay, and we will reserve fuel in the booster, the Unix booster or Raptor 9 booster uh, for return. And so, ignition. But I won't do the return, that's a whole other business. And launch. We do need to verify that this is an aerodynamically stable situation, but I believe so. Especially with the fins down there. Of course, we don't have to face winds, so we, we get a slightly easier time in Kerbal because we don't have the high-level winds, gusts, and all that. That's actually a big deal, as anybody who pays attention to uh, weather scrubs knows. The stress produced by those winds is significant. And again, if you uh, didn't catch the earlier video, the reason it's called Lex is because is after the character in Jurassic Park. It's not after the spaceship Lex, which is L-E-X-X. -X. So, it does not need the extra X. Well, it's looking good as far as control is concerned. We're not using a whole lot of pitch, even when I do tell it to pitch. Previously, I had the RCS on Lex a little bit too powerful, I think. I've toned it down a little bit. They're 4 kilonewton thrusters, which is still pretty powerful. But they were 8 because I was anticipating needing to do burns with them, but I think that's... It was a little bit overdone for that. Okay, I wanted to reserve 20 seconds, so shut down. Separation to ignition. And off goes the booster with 20 seconds of fuel. I haven't landed it safely, but I demonstrated that it could be landed safely by a competent person, so I'm satisfied with that. So again, we're carrying 20 tons of cargo, which is not much, but, you know, we're upside down. I didn't even notice before that we were upside down. So I guess orientation-wise... Lex is upside down, so we want 180 roll. I might need to change that. Don't know why I was trying to use RCS to control pitch. This should be able to handle that fairly well. Uh, it's using a little bit of pitch roll. Bit of an issue, of course. But we seem to be fine on that right now. I mean, obviously a single engine cannot control roll. That's why it's maxed out like that. You have to remember to enable crossfeed on the decoupler, otherwise, and maybe do we need to enable crossfeed here too? Uh, it doesn't have that option, so I assume that crossfeed is already enabled. Hopefully, otherwise the engines are not gonna suck from here. Let me just temporarily see if I increase the fuel priority, whether fuel gets taken from here properly or not. No. Okay, well, that's a bit of a problem. That's currently higher priority than back here. Might need to put an enable crossfeed thing on this. So that it can feed back. I'm just going to go ahead and pump the fuel from the front into the back right now. Just so I get a good read on our Delta V ahead of time. Okay, getting close to orbit now. Throttling down. Okay, uh, 272 by 225. We've got 600 meters per second left with the 20 tons of cargo. I decided that this would be a comfortable margin. And again, of course, we reserved fuel in the first stage. Uh, so while we still have light here, I'm going to eject out the cargo. So raising the hatch and RCS on so that we can prepare to avoid the cargo and switching to SAS. All right, so out, the, out goes the cargo and 
avoidance maneuver. Oh, oh, uh, back, 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 back. Okay. All right. Almost hit the hatch. Uh, out goes that 20 tons. Now we have 949 meters per second, which is plenty. Uh, though if you look at the actual fuel, it's like the tiniest, tiniest bit left. And I think at this level, we need to make sure that the front is empty. Otherwise, the center mass is too far forward. Just one of those things. All right. So, I mean, still a lot of Delta V. I mean, if we get down to landing on our tail, that should be doable. Okay. So, let's see where we want to deorbit. Of course, trying to get back to Cape Canaveral is another challenge. I'll try and I'll deorbit about where the shuttle deorbits, at least in the game. In real life, it's a different matter. Uh, but in the game, I deorbit around 120 degrees east, basically over Australia. And I'm not going to use the main engine to deorbit. That would be probably too powerful. So it's an RCS burn. Again, this is why I originally had the RCS at 8 kilonewtons, but I realized that if I kept it like that, it used too much fuel puffing away during re-entry if there was any instability. So I didn't want to reserve that much fuel for the RCS during re-entry. So toning it down a little bit, but uh, toning it down a little bit was better. I don't think the vertical ones should really be firing this much. I don't know. Is it handling pitch? It's not really handling pitch. I think they're firing because it thinks that they are partly... They, I mean, they are partly um, pointing backwards in order to avoid the fin, you see. They're at a bit of an angle, but it shouldn't be using them for forward thrust. I don't know exactly how to stop it from doing that, though. Those should just be used for pitch. Anyway. All the little things. And we'll go to a periapsis of 40 kilometers, which is pretty standard for the shuttle in in Kerbal. So that we'll just try a shuttle-ish re-entry and see what happens, basically, is the goal. Uh, remember on the back end here, the tank tiles, the tiles are actually a separate part from the stage. So that might be interesting. Well, that should be about right. So, that's right, but we want roll 180. Oh, 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 I didn't get to do it. I didn't get to... Oh, sh stop. Okay. Okay. Oh. I guess it'll have to be a negative 40 pitch. Being upside down is so complicated. Okay, well, we have to compensate for being basically upside down on the controls. But here we go. And the important thing in entry is seeing what the controls are actually doing, how much pitch we're using and everything. Whether it's wobbling in one axis or not. Well, Hawaii two hour left there. So we're on a good track. So descent mode is here, so to turn descent mode on, we can actually change the offset limit here. Uh, that's different from the stock descent mode option, COM, COM offset option. And that's why we have to put a different module for realism overhaul, because realism overhaul removes the stock one, and you have to set up this adjustable COM one. I don't know why I have two different curb net access things on the same module. Uh, that might have to do with the, the simple logistics mod, I'm not sure. Okay, we are at 100 kilometers, haven't used much pitch yet. Little bit of roll and yaw wobble. Okay, we are at 80 kilometers and we're slowing down well enough. Uh, we are approaching where the shuttle also seems to get a little bit of lift here. And we do want to hang out in this region to burn off some of the extra energy. So we will go up a little bit, hopefully not too much. 
but we're just hanging out at this altitude and we haven't used much pitch so again this is the first time I've launched it with these fins uh, or wings whatever you want to call them uh, and for some reason the vertical ones look from some angles it looks like they're floating but that's because the shadow is being cast weirdly but anyway oh but oh this is super so oh gosh they're supposed to be space oh i was everything else is space plane right oh geez i put the wrong ones here these are supposed to be space plane ones it's holding so well too uh, hopefully it won't blow up yeah so those are inadequate control surfaces they need to be space plane ones which have higher heat tolerance might still work but we'll see but yeah as you can see i i did my work as far as trying to get it properly balanced before even test launching it so yep but even then i don't necessarily know it's the toughest part is the 50 to 60 kilometer area where the atmosphere really starts to get thick so we're we're not anywhere near that yet and now I've got an additional worry because of a slight mistake. I mean, if we lose those, it's not a game ender. Because uh, these could te technically control roll as well. I've turned them off for that purpose. But I'll turn them on again in a hurry if necessary. Of course, the RCS is holding roll right now. Well, it didn't get a whole lot of extra lift. It's headed back down already. So, yeah, it did not uh, go up very much, which is good. We are over Mexico. Um, we're a little bit south of Cape Canaveral because we're coming back uh, one orbit. In fact, if we're really lucky, we'd hit Boca Chica. Uh, well, it's actually it's a little bit further south, huh? uh, but we're pretty close to that. Uh, though that's really heating up now. Uh, it's probably going to explode. That'll leave us a little bit imbalanced in everything. That's not going to be great. Interesting that the one over there doesn't want to explode. And here we go. They're controlling. I'm going to let this, these control roll as well. Okay, well... It's not going to be the most accurate results now, but at least we're steady. That's, I guess, good that we tested what happens if something explodes. <laughs> uh, sort of. We're using a substantial amount more RCS, but it's not really cutting into our supplies. We're pulling the nose up a little bit. So that means our center mass is just a little bit too far forward right now. And we're using a chunk of yaw. You can see our vertical stabilizers, which are all moving tilted like that to compensate. That's not great because the yaw problem gets worse as we go down until about 50 kilometers. So we're definitely not landing in Texas. Going right over that. So, if we were going for Texas, we're overshooting. If we're going for Florida, we're undershooting. And too far south. This gets more drag than the shuttle does, it seems, right now. And that makes sense. It's actually a pretty large surface area, and it's fairly light. We're not carrying any cargo down. We're, and uh, overall, it's just a huge tank. It's doing pretty well, and we should start our retro burn a little bit further along than we did this time. Not a huge amount. Uh, we're aiming. If we were aiming for Cape Canaveral, we were would be aiming for 80 degrees west. So we'll see where we end up. And the left aileron exploded. Now we're all balanced again. <laughs> Maybe we don't even need those. I don't know. Maybe the canards are sufficient for holding roll and pitch. 
The canards are important because, again, uh, there's concern about the center mass being too far forward. And I want a certain amount of surface area in the back here to add to drag, though we seem to be doing pretty good on that. So, But we aren't coming back from the moon. There's another uh, use case for this, coming back from the moon or even Mars. So there we want as much drag as possible, so we want large surface areas. But um, so we want the canards to pull the center of lift forward and so that uh, and the pod can be compensated for. So that's what's going on with the canards as it is with the starship as well. Same situation. 60 kilometers. We're still doing great on pitch. Still doing great on pitch. Everything else except for those... Uh, Mischosen Elevons is fine. We don't have any body flap or anything. These do not tilt. They're just wings. And that's Florida up ahead, I think. Yep. We could try for Miami, maybe. At some point, I'm going to have to use Descent Mode and see if this goes to its tail. And that is a heck of a judgment call when I do that. Now, of course, they do it at the last minute, but that's not going to be enough time for me to react to anything. We are through the more difficult part of this swimmingly. We've got only a tiny bit of pitch use. No yaw, no roll issues right now. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of proud of myself. <laughs> I, I've done good. There's no reaction wheel on here. Right, there's gimbal, there's all sorts of thrust limiting because there's engines and RCS and of course the hatch itself. And uh, so that's the pod there. And that's this here. There's no reaction wheel holding this. This is a pretty good job. For our first uh, launch in this configuration. Okay, well, we're approaching where the shuttle would pitch down and I think we're not maxing out pitch or anything. Maybe I'll leave it up. That's Miami there. Um, so another uh, consideration is that with the large tilting ones, tilting wings that they have on Starship, uh, that might help with adjusting cross range. Uh, so I mean, you know, getting a better cross range. Okay, our pitch is going a little bit right. No, well, that's as expected. Like I said, this is when the shuttle pitches down too. Now, otherwise we stall out, you see. it's We're losing a lot of speed here. But how thick do I want to get into the atmosphere before flipping around onto the tail? That's the question. But yeah, um, having these being fixed, I don't know. I mean, it should be fine for cross range as well if we roll. I mean, we'll have to test the rolling and all. all. The pitch is getting a little bit high. Hmm... Actually, the Raptor isn't the main landing engine, it's the these upper thrusters on the pod. Because the Raptor is a vacuum engine, after all. So, let's activate them in preparation. Okay, it's, it's uh, having a little bit more trouble here. Um, okay, I'm gonna turn on descent mode now. Okay, wow! Oh, aerodynamic forces might be, uh, right, I mean, if we do this lower in the atmosphere, far will totally rip us apart. But, oh, I don't know why RCS got turned off. No wonder it was maxing out. Oh, uh, uh, we need to go uh, negative and zero, zero. Execute. That's probably why it's partly confused. I should have turned Smart ASS off ahead of time. Well, let's see if we can figure this out. It's at least sort of going on to its tail. I assume that the Starship version will be a lot smoother. We could work on the transition a little bit, and that's something... Uh, obviously, part of the problem was that Smart ASS was not oriented properly. Uh, I think it's got uh, stalling out and it's gonna try and go into a flat spin. 
instead of going on to its tail properly. Maybe I should have the descent mode thing go even more forcefully onto the tail. So instead of uh, having the amount that I said it at, obviously it tried to go to its tail, but it just wasn't as heavy. And so it's flat now. Or we could have done that earlier. Oh, wait. Uh, no, it's still sort of floaty. Come on. Part of the problem is mm, the fact that I've set the wing low instead of centered. That might be causing a bit of an issue. But we probably needed to retain some more velocity. And we've stalled right now. I bet far will say so. Well, large angle of attack. Well, that's obvious, though. I wonder if I pre-ignite the engines, if we can do some... Oh, those ignite pretty fast, actually. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, um, well, this is better. Okay, uh, might have done a good thing there. Oh, no, it's slopping again. Oh, gosh. I don't think I have enough fuel to keep it like this. Maybe I should do that, like, at the last minute, then. Now well, let's get ground level. Well, that's basically sea level. Uh, okay, ignite. Oh no. Ah, we're out of fuel. I thought I'd reserved a lot. Uh. Yeah, okay. Well, this is going to take some more some more work here. Oh, parachutes. Forgot I have an abort system. Oh, that's too late. I needed to remember I had an abort system a little bit earlier. Oh, well, we sort of sort of kept this pod safe. <laughs> Okay, well, anyway, yes. Uh, so, like I said, suspense. Uh, um, Re-entry fine, last bit of touchdown. I'll have to give some more thought. I don't know. That seems difficult. I mean, it's not like I have a lot of experience with that part. Re-entry I've done a lot of times and it shows. Um, flipping over and getting it to touch down properly, that is still a work in progress. All right, so there you have it. Uh, giving Lex wings partially successful. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.